Hi, everybody. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. How many of you, is this your first time at the ranch? Oh, some. Good, great. And uh, others have been here before many times, several times. Thank you for driving up. We're so happy to have this gentleman with us. A couple of us have got to spend a few days with him already, and so he's already one of us in our family. We're going to adopt him. He's going to become a native New Mexican like most of us who live in New Mexico, that. right? <laughs> so um, I'm going to turn it over to him, but just thank you again for, for coming up here. And on behalf of the UNM Alumni Association and all of the people that uh, made this happen, Sharon and Ava, and all of the departments at UNM, we are very appreciative. So, um, Andrew, yeah. you can tell us all the little fun stories that took place up here. Yeah. Wow, it's a bit of a surprise. I didn't know I'd be talking to you. <laughs> but, um, wow, I mean, I've just had an amazing experience coming uh, coming here to the Kiowa Ranch because, of course, I was also shown by Bill the, um, Where is he? the Del Monte Ranch, which is very, very close, of course, really, really close. Of course, it was the Del Monte Ranch that Lawrence stayed in the first time that he uh, came to New Mexico in that, that winter of 1922. To 23. I think the Kiowa Ranch, obviously, as we've heard in the lecture, you know, it was given um, given to Frida by Mabel. Um, Lawrence kind of moved up here and was, I think, well, remarkably happy. It was the place that he was the most happy, most happy um, in in his life, really, in many respects. And I think it's really the second period that he's up here. So from March 1925 until he had to leave in September 1925 to go back to back to Europe and never return. I think that period is the one that, for anybody who reads about Lawrence's life, was, was one of the happiest. Because it was in that period that um, he bought Susan McCann and had chickens up here. And actually set about, he was always very interested in the land here and the history of the land. And as I said in the lecture, at the end of St. Mauer, the novella that he wrote, he describes in great detail um, the history of the ownership of this land. I think I've, I've learned, actually, that I shouldn't be calling the ranch the Kiowa Ranch. It's Kiowa. Kiowa. It's Kiowa. <laughs> and I'll never make that mistake again. Yeah. <laughs> but, but of course, you can just say you have an accent. I'll say I have an accent. Yeah. Or, 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 as I'm told here, that, that I speak funny. But, um, <laughs> But, you know, I mean, clearly Lawrence was very interested in the history of the place um, and wrote about that because it was the, the only piece of property that Lawrence owned. He was generally against land ownership and was quite opposed to that. But um, this particular piece of land he always loved. And it's such a pity, I think, that he only had a short period of time with it for visa and for health reasons and that he had to go away um, in 25. But one of the pieces of writing that um, I didn't mention when I was asked after the lecture what pieces that he wrote when he was here is, and it's actually a collection of essays, short philosophical essays, and it's a book that he privately published with a Philadelphia company called the Centaur Press in 1925 called Reflections on the Death of a Porcupine and other essays. Um, Lawrence, of course, you know, we know, was incredibly responsive to, to nature. And that period of subsistence living up here, where he had this very um, skittish cow called Susan, who was always escaping, and he had to catch in order to milk so often. Um, and when he kept chickens, um, and try and, and we're set about irrigating the land here um, in order to produce uh, crops and, and be self-sufficient. I think it's in that period that He's very differently responsive to nature here. Those essays, I mean, Lawrence read Einstein, but those essays are incredibly fleet-footed, short little things. Actually, the form of them is remarkably, um, I think, innovative in many respects. But what he does is he describes his daily interactions with nature up here, his observation of nature, his interaction with nature. And what he makes of it is, um, what Lawrence always described as the central thing about human life, the, the interaction with the circumambient universe. And I think that's one of the things that he saw very differently up here. And these relative, very relativistic essays, they describe the interactions between, in the animal kingdom here, 
they see his interactions with the animal world as just one element in the big scheme of things. He's able to actually look at himself as just another element in the ecology, I suppose, of the Kiowa Ranch. I think for anybody who wants to read some of Lawrence's writings that perhaps do capture the spirit of his time here, it's not just the fictional writings, short stories, Woman Who Rode Away, The Princess and the novella St. Mauer, but also yeah, I'd really recommend some of those essays. They're very little known and little read, but I think they are wonderful and they give a very different view of Lawrence from the, from the one who's very interested in the gen, you know, gender politics and the sexual, sexual kind of uh, conflict and those other things. It gives you a very different view of a reflective Lawrence and a Lawrence who was very concerned always to see his place in nature differently and to respond to nature. And I think that's one of the great things that this place gave him. And coming up here, I can see, you know, you can really see why, can't you? Mm -hmm. To be up here in such isolation. So, well, thank you very much for coming here. Gosh, how great to see so many people here. I actually remember, I came here in 2005, and it's strange because in my memory, it was very different then. <laughs> it really was very different, but of course, things grow, don't they? And in 13 years, they probably have. But of course, I remember the memorial. And I remember thinking how incredibly tiny Dorothy Brett's studio was, and why she tended to call it a shed. Um, I think it really was. Um, so thank you very much, and thank you for, for coming. I'm sure, Ava, will you want to say some words while we're here? No. <laughs> Sharon probably well, wants Sharon. to. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I don't have anything in particular to say, yeah. except just to, uh, are, are, there, are there people here who have not been to the ranch before? Yes. 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 Oh, okay, well, so, um, so I, I guess I would just say that although this place was very, very important to Lawrence, it was also important, it's also important historically in other ways too. Um, the cabin that you'll see in just a few minutes where Lawrence lived mm -hmm. is called the Homesteaders Cabin because it was built during the hum after, right after the Homesteaders Act and the first family who lived here, um, they, um, they grew alfalfa and uh, out in this pasture right here. This, but this pasture out here, which when you come back, in, it's beyond the uh, parking lot, there's a place there that's called the Vista, and you can see out. It's in the National Registry proposal. You can see out for the. You can see the gorge. You can see all kinds of things, and um, that. But that field there is one of the only um, level places in this whole area of the Carson National Forest. And so the Kiowa Indians, or as we like to call them, the Kiowa, um, <laughs> the Kiowa Indians used uh, that used that field to um, for campgrounds, and they used it because there's a there's an ancient ancestral trail that tra that goes through this ranch and is still used by the Taos Pueblo every year for for religious reasons, and uh, so there were traders and Native Americans. The Kiowa came and traded with the Taos Pueblo and vice versa. And um, this alfalfa field was then used as a campground. So there's, this, this place has a really rich history. I'm just touching on it a little bit. Um, and all sorts of things that ha have happened here. And, uh, and Lawrence, I think, was well aware of that. And it's one of the reasons he loved it. And it's one of the reasons that I loved it and have tried for many years to um, get some traction on doing more to um, care for this property. Um, but if all of you care about it, you know, tell other people about it. It's a, it, it is an important place and, and um, for lots of reasons. But the, the homesteader's cabin is, is still sitting there. And uh, we'll go. We'll go and see it. But another thing that I should tell you that you should also look at <coughs> is the the Lawrence tree, which is right outside of the uh, cabin. It's a huge ponderosa pine. You can right see there. it right there. It's it was made famous by Georgia O'Keeffe, who painted it. Um, she was here after Lawrence's death, not too long after Lawrence's death, a few years. And she, she took the uh, perspective 
of reclining on a little bench and painting it looking up at night. And so there are stars. And recently, well, in the last year or so, National Geographic photographers have been out here photographing it also at night for a special book on the nine wisest trees in the world. <laughs> so it's, it's very significant in its own right. And there's, when you go up there, you'll see that there's a plaque and there's a, a sort of weathered version of Georgia O'Keeffe's painting so that you can see what she saw. But you can also see, if you look up the uh, trunk of the tree, you can see where um, someone, I don't know that it was Lawrence, but someone had put um, a rod in to hold a lamp. And it used to be probably <laughs> here, but now it's way up there. <laughs> so t take a look at that. And then the, other, the only last thing I would say is I always think that the little yellow and white cat that's here, yeah. um, which has been here for several years now, and my husband's taken a lot of pictures of that cat, is sort of like a, um, it, 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 you know, cal uh, Lawrence had a cat very similar to that cat, and um, she's a very friendly little cat. I always think of her as his spirit here. <laughs> so if you see her around, I was delighted to see her today. She's, uh, she's a wonderful spirit. So thanks, um, thank you so much for coming, and thank you to the Alumni Association for doing this wonderful job of organizing this visit. I'm, I'm much in the debt of Kim Feldman and uh, all the people that she works with. So thank you all. Thank you. you.